Today we're talking about the 80-20 rule, also known as the Pareto Principle or the Law of the Vital Few. Perhaps you've heard of it. It's basically the idea that 80% of the effects in life come from 20% of the causes. And if you want to visualize it, imagine we got a room of 100 people and we got to solve a problem and 20 of them are worth a damn and the other 80 just need to go somewhere. So what does that mean? 20% of causes. For instance, 20% of the activities you do produce 80% of the opportunities you have. 20% of the relationships you have produce 80% of your joy. 20% of your teeth probably chew 80% of your food. 20% of your organs keep you 80% alive. 20% of babies produce like 80% of good feelings. So there's just all of these ways that a few causes produce outsize effects. That's the idea. By identifying these vital few activities, ideas, and people in your life, you can start to make even more room for them. Or as our friend Luke said, how do we get the most for the most little? We want to get the most for the most little. Is that close? We want to get the most with the most little. Now, the most classic example that's used in business books around the 80-20 rule is the idea that 80% of your profits come from 20% of your products. I apply the 80-20 principle to everything. 20% of your actions or inputs or products or services will create 80% of what you want. And and this is the one that's most relevant to us because the reason I wanted to start with this 80-20 video and the reason we're rebranding some of our informational videos as the 20% is because we realize that a certain kind of video we're making on this channel is producing 80% of the likes, views, subscribes, positive comments, inspiration. Sorry, a chicken almost <laughs> took a run at me. I think he's in charge too though black stallion of a chicken right there. Once you identify these 20% activities every time you're doing them, there's no doubt. There's no FOMO. Should I be? Shouldn't I be? You should be doing those things as much as you possibly can. They're your heavy hitters. They're your Jose Canseco's. Jacked full of steroids right in the neck. Sending a ball straight into the top upper tiers to fall into a little child's glove so that his tears may then oil his glove so that he may become the next Jose Canseco and take even more steroids. Well, let's start with some examples of how you could apply an 80-20 analysis to your life. Who are the 20% of the people in your life who give you 80% of your joy? Mom, dad, siblings, best friend. Put 80% of your efforts into them. What are the 20% of places or things that I do that produce 80% of my joy? I mean, when you sit down and do an analysis like this, it reveals a lot because we're not behaving rationally. You might be in a romantic relationship, for instance, that's addictive. And you might say, this is definitely providing 80% of my trauma, pain, annoyance, and uh, girth of that big vein that comes out of my forehead, but when's the last time it's given me real joy? You can be at a job that hasn't given you a single joyful experience in years. The Pareto Principle allows us to apply some objectivity to our lives. It can be done in little ways, just sort of checking in, you know, even, even within a task. What sub-steps within that task could accomplish 80% of the task right away? The Pareto Principle is also related to an idea I first heard from a professor I had who worked on on the Obama campaign, Obama. and he called it theory of change. Change has come to America. Basically, it's another no-duh idea, no-brainer idea that says, think about the person you're trying to reach first, okay? If you're like us and you're making videos, who is the person you're trying to reach? What do they need? What would make them click? It sounds so common sense, but for most creators, the first thing you asked is, what do I want to do? What's exciting to me? What did I just see on Netflix that I want to recreate? What flavor? of the month am I excited about? What self-indulgent black and white noir romance in a diner can I spend three years making that no one will care about? We always start with what we want to say first. It's like a person at a dinner table who can't quite find the conversation. They just jump in with whatever's on their mind. In reality, in this life, you have to deliver what people need, what they would ask for, what they would click on. So for this campaign director, he wasn't just saying, what would be the perfect Obama ad. He was creating 100 ads and split testing them um, through Google emails, seeing which people opened which ones. If I asked for $5 versus $7 versus $9, how many people comply? He was never taking anything on faith 
always testing what are the 20% of our strategies or tactics that are producing 80% of the results. And once you get into this, it's a fun process because it takes all the guesswork out. A lot of creative toil and pain comes from, is my idea good enough? Will people still care? Will they like the next one? Well, if you do a little bit of split testing and you really pay attention to what your audience is rewarding, it's not going to be what you expect, but there is a certain certainty to it, you know? If I make a hundred videos that are packed with information about how you can improve your life today, funny, animated by the ever talented Oliver, there's gonna be no guesswork involved. Some of them are gonna do better than others, but overall, that's what people need. And I didn't know that going in. Going in, I thought it was sketch. Like when I was growing up, college humor was huge. Funny or Die was huge. Key and Peele came out later, Chappelle show. It seemed like that was the world I was coming into. As I grew older and I realized what impacts me, what I spend most of my day watching, it's not South Park as much anymore. It's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's the denial of death. It's ayahuasca trips. It's ice baths and overcoming social anxiety and just generally speaking, playing the game of life and enjoying the process of growing and thriving. As much as I still love South Park though. If we're still alive in the morning, then we'll know we're not dead. If in starting this process you have trouble figuring out what are the 20% of things that are giving you results, it can help to start with a negative version of that. What are the 20% of things that are definitely hurting my progress? That's usually easier for people to figure out. I remember it's like my first internship. They said, you're not going to figure out what you want to do, but you're going to figure out what you don't want to do. Most of us know that there's a person, there's a habit, there's a sleep schedule, there's an addiction, there's something unresolved. Uh, that could free up 80% of their time if they took care of it. Like a lesion that needs to be lanced and then covered with antiseptic. For some reason, I just thought of Lance Bass. <laughs> like a lesion that needs to be lance bast and covered in antiseptic. But I think when you do find something that is working, there's something extra special about it. It feels like you've hacked the matrix. These percentages are not set in stone. In fact, Pareto himself was describing wealth distribution at the time in Italy. 20% of the population owned 80% of the wealth. But the idea is that a few things produce the most results. So you might have one thing that produces 90% of your results. I feel like uh, Bernie Sanders, the number of times I've said percent, look, we are all in this together, but the top 20% of activities that I do in my day produce 80% of the positive results in my life. If I could distribute that 20% to 100% of the people, then that 20% that produces 80% of the results would produce 80% of the results for the 100% of the people, and it would be 100% of the results. Thank you for having me on your podcast, Joe Rogan. <laughs> I'm not going to smoke marijuana with you. Please vote for Joe Biden for some reason. <laughs> Salud, hello again. I wanted to add one final caveat to this video. When you're applying the 2080 rule to anything in life, it's important to mention that this shouldn't be your only determinant in how you proceed. For example, this channel might benefit from associating itself with an ideology or political group, right wing, manosphere, feminist, super liberal, vegan. You know, we could go down that path and get way more viewers. That would be a 20% strategy. But if it's not not genuine to who we are as people, it's not a good long-term strategy. Fake it till you make it is a drag. It really is. So it's better to get a smaller portion of a pie that you can grow long-term than a larger portion of a pie that has limits on it because it's inauthentic and feels gross and it's pandering. And by the way, there are a million people trying to do that anyway better than you, but no one can be yourself better than you. That was a run-on sentence. Anyway, thank you all for watching so much. Oh, the next video is going to be about how time actually slows down when you're having Having fun. Contrary to popular belief.